Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, just source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Justin Maxwell on the line, and he is a tax and wealth strategist over at Big Life Financial. Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me on here. I'm excited to uh, to speak with you about the research and own tax incentives. Yeah, um, it's going to be a good topic. A lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives listening to this right now, and uh, research and development tax credit's a big deal. So definitely looking forward to get into that. But before we do, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing over at Big Life Financial. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Yeah, so I'm a tax and wealth strategist. So our whole focus is helping business owners save as much money as legally possible on taxes, and then helping them put their money in in vehicles that are tax-free and are going to allow them to develop wealth and build wealth um, that they can control, that they're in charge of. So they're taking charge of their investments, they're taking charge of their finances in a way that allows them to have more peace of mind and just know that there's not as much volatility and they're more in control. So we're all about keep as much as possible and then make as much as possible in the proper vehicles that are going to save you as, as much on tax as definitely possible. That's awesome. And uh, I think that's also a great transition. So let's dive right into today's topic. So the research and development tax credits. Um, I mean, where do you want to start with this? One? It's a big topic. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a really large topic. I think it's, it's very important for people to realize that you might be thinking, well, my, this is something I just hand off to my CPA and my CPA handles this and they're just going to be, they, I'm sure if we qualified for this incentive that they would have already done it. And I, I just want to make it really clear that the IRS has put out numbers that only about 5% of small business owners are, that qualify are actually taking advantage of the research and development tax incentives. And so there's a really, really low chance that you and your CPA have missed this incentive. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, on average, we find it's about between ten and thirty thousand dollars every single year that you're missing out by not using this incentive. And like I said, it's only about a five percent chance that you and your CPA have actually used it. Yeah, and for these incentives, just to be clear, uh, it's it's not that you're replacing a CPA or anything of that nature. Just to be clear for the audience, it's just that these credits are very specialized, and it's not something that, I mean, you, you need a company that only does this. So what you're doing is you're working um, really in tandem, and you're working, you know, um, in this specific area to complement their overall tax strategy. Am I off on that, or am I right? No, that is, that's dead on. The analogy I love to use is, most CPAs fall into, if we made this a medical analogy, as like a general practice doctor. When you get into incentives and credits, the tax, that side of the tax code contains 5 million words. It's a lot of not nuances and a lot of different rules, different things that go into it. And so we fall into, we're like the, health, the heart surgeon portion. Like you need to, you have your general practice doctor, but you also have a surgeon or you have a specialist that help you do specific things in, in medicine. It's the same thing here. So research and development tax incentives and credits and all that whole side of the entire tax code requires a specialist. And so you have to add a specialist to your team to help your CPA so you can get the most out of your tax experience. Yeah, and what I found with this is that the people that have done the best with these types of credits are typically the, you know, larger companies, and that's because they have departments and they have teams and they, they're they more aware of this, whereas the people that, you know, the credit was maybe intentionally made for to a certain extent um, are usually missing it, like you said, like those percentages are low. And I, I, why do you think that is? Like, why do you think if that money's there for them and people can qualify and it's not – I mean, this isn't any – 
special, like, you know, get rich quick, nothing like that. I mean, it's, it's credit. Like, it exists out there. It's to help these small businesses, but they're not getting it. I mean, why do you think that is? I think there's just a, I think a few reasons is a lot of times business owners, they, they're really good at their business. But when it comes to taxes and finances, they have no clue, and they are a little bit afraid to dive into it. Maybe it's boring, or maybe they're afraid that they're going to get confused, or they're, they're afraid they're going to spark an audit by getting too nitty-gritty into it. And so there's just a lack of, I'm just going to trust this person I'm hiring to do everything possible. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rely on them to do it. And I don't think there's any more I need to learn. But a lot of times it's just some CPAs aren't the best and you might have not hired the one that's going to get you the best, the best. And maybe they do an excellent job at deductions. I'm not saying that they're horrible at deductions. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're fabulous at tax planning, but there, you still need to just realize that there's more out there. And I think it's just a lack of, lack of knowing they exist on on the, mm-hmm. on the business owner's part. And I think that's the biggest key. Yeah, and it's tricky, too, because you think about, you know, most business owners, you know, they start out, maybe they're, they bootstrapped it, they're funding it themselves, maybe they didn't have this big, you know, private equity round or anything like that, or maybe their seed capital was them, um, you know, raiding their bank account, right? And so now the, the business starts working, they start growing, maybe they started with the most cost-effective CPA or service, and now they've been working with the guy or gal for, you know, quite some time, and even though they specialize in working with small businesses, um, Um, You know, they're going to do their best to work with your business as it grows, but it may not be their niche, depending on how big your business has gotten, depending on if they have the resources or the systems in place. So you combine that with um, with what's with um, the idea of adding credit to the mix. And it's like it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot to, to, to contemplate not only for the business owner, but also for the CPA. Um, right. to deal with both of those things. So, I mean, it's, it, it goes on both sides, depending on what the person's goals are for the business, right? How big they want to make it, all those other things. I mean, there's a lot of factors, but um, what do you, so for the people listening, let's, um, they're, they're listening to this right now and they're saying, huh, am I supposed to be doing this? Like I might fall into one of these buckets that uh, Adam and Justin are talking about. What are some of the things that would let a business owner know if they, and again, I know it's complex, but just some things to trigger um, something in their their mind that would say maybe they need to follow up and learn more about these credits because they might qualify. Right. So first and foremost, if you're not paying about ten thousand dollars a year in taxes, you're not gonna you're not gonna there's not you're not of money and taxable income to to make it worthwhile. So that's like the bottom the minimum threshold. So if you're below that, just maybe continue listening and think like when I get to that spot, then I can know I can start adding this. But if you're above it and you haven't been using it, there's a really big chance thing to be investigating. But just a few, I'm just going to throw out some keywords, key phrases that mm-hmm. if you're, if these are hitting you, then this is something and you're not doing it, you're, you're missing out on quite a bit of money and it could be a lot of money for some businesses. So are you pro- providing custom solutions to your clients versus an off the shelf solution? Do you innovate? Do you create new things? Are you enhancing products, processes, or systems to make things more effective or better? So I think a lot of times people get caught up and they think it only has to be a product or it has to be a test tube or it has to be in like a science lab or engineering lab. That is not the case. It can be improving a a product, a system, or even a process of how you're running your business. So any of that, there needs to be some sort of hard science behind it. So when I say hard science, biology, chemistry, math, statistics. So if you're tracking data, you're keeping track of this data, and you're trying to improve the way you're running your business, then there's a really high chance you're going to qualify for something. Industries that qualify at a really high rate are people like dentists and uh, engineers and architects and uh, manufacturers and people that are creating things in that. But we have found that pretty much any industry at some point is trying to innovate. Like business owners want to improve. They want to do better. They want to look for the next best thing. And that process of you doing that really helps. It also helps if you have employees. Because if you're paying someone to invent something, to create a software, to create a piece of technology, to create something that's going to help your business, the money you're paying that person, the percentage of that goes to the credit. So the more people you pay, the more people, the more of that salary, the more of that, the money you're, you're shoveling out to that person goes to the credit. So that, that helps as well. So I think that's a pretty big, that's, I, I gave a pretty big um, sweep of what would qualify. I didn't really get into specifics, but it, if you felt like you qualified in there, like something clicks with you there, then there's a big chance you're going to qualify. 
So um, final question, um, Justin. So if somebody's listening to this, and uh, two-part question. So if somebody's listening to this and they want to connect with Big Life Financial, so uh, question number one, what are the right types of companies, whether it's size or industry or niche or whatever it happens to be, revenue, um, that are typically make uh, a company a good fit for Big Life Financial, um, number one. Number two, what's the best way for them to reach out to connect with you and your team? So the, when it comes to, like, what size, like, what we can handle any any size of company, but we have found that we have helped and we can get money back for people that fall between the two to 100 size of employee. Um, the revenue doesn't really matter. It does matter because you have to make enough revenue to pay enough taxes. And like I said, that $10,000 limit. But we can help any size. Like, if you were massive and you found that you hadn't done research and development credits, we can help you too. But we just found that once you get too big, then you actually have people that you've, you've, you've already reached the point where you're already using these credits. But the two to 100 range is where we found people miss this the most. When it comes to contacting us, the nice thing that we offer is a lot of times people think if they're going to dive into this, they're gonna have, I'm going to have to pay them money and we might not actually find anything. That's, you don't have to worry about that. To find out if you qualify, it's a completely free. It's a completely free process. It, all, it only costs your time. It's about a 15-minute qualification interview. We saw an application. We're going to look at your last three years of tax returns, and then we can know if you qualify and for how much. And like I said, we've qualified people on average between ten and 30000 but some businesses get back hundreds of thousands, 200, even up to upwards of approaching a million dollars. So it's something you definitely need to begin. When it comes to scheduling an appointment for that free, no obligation consultation, just go to biglifefinancial.com backslash research credits. You'll fill out, you just put your name and phone number in there. It'll automatically load onto our calendar and we'll give you a call and we'll set up an, um, uh, an interview and we'll get this going and we'll get that money back for you. Fantastic. Well, Justin, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your, your background and your business, Big Life Financial, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Justin, thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.